So you have one or two AR-15s and you're looking to pick up your next rifle. Should it be the PSA Jackal? But that's what we're going over today. Being honest with you guys, rifle content doesn't do good for us on YouTube. So we'd appreciate a like and subscribe if you want to see more content like this. So what is the Jackal? Essentially, it is a long stroke gas piston system that is on top of an AR-15 lower. It's kind of like AK meets BRN-180 meets AR-15. It's kind of a hodgepodge of a couple different guns. The most closely related thing is the BRN-180. Why I think this one is better is simply because of the charging handle location. I don't like that the BRN has it up here by the ejection port. It's not an AK because it's a slightly different piston system and it's not an AR-15 because it's not a gas impingement system. So it's kind of a mix of a couple different rifles. On our rifle, we're running the 13.7 pin and weld with the ACR-ish stock. On top, we have an EOTech with the EOTech magnifier, a Streamlight ProTech, and a BCM vertical grip. Since this is a 13.7, we can get away with running this. Be careful, you do not want to run this on a pistol version. One thing that really separates this rifle from a lot of other rifles is going to be the stock. Initially, this actually piqued my interest the most about the rifle. Having a piston-operated gun is really cool, but this just really made me feel nostalgic and it reminded me a lot of the ACR. And honestly, that's half the reason why I bought this rifle. One thing I will say is it is incredibly flimsy. You can grab it and it moves quite a lot. It doesn't feel super rigid. We've only got about 500 rounds on this gun and it's never been an issue for me. I've never felt like it was going to break. I've also seen people complain that this cheek piece here wants to flick down and fall under recoil when they shoulder the rifle it wants to collapse. Never had that issue with us. Again, we've only got about 500 rounds on it, so we haven't been on the gun long enough to maybe see that issue. It is really nice that it is a folding stock. It collapses the rifle into a really nice compact package. It's a little bit too long to make it a bag gun, but it is nice. If you throw it in your truck, you can make it a little bit smaller, but it works really good. Never had any issues. It's easy to operate. It's not like the Sig Spear where you have to push with a thousand pounds of pressure to get it to open. This one opens really easy. It is all made of plastic though, so I probably would have liked to see this button and assembly be metal just for longevity and rigidity. One thing we did notice when shooting this rifle is it is pretty gassy for a piston operating system. And you can change the settings here really easily. There's not very much tension on it. We are running ours in the most open position. We found that if we go even one setting less, we start getting failures to feed or failures to eject. We've only ran PSA's 55 grain through this. We haven't tried any other kinds of ammo yet. So those settings will definitely come in handy when you throw a suppressor on here and it's gonna be super over gassed. But we found that it just liked being all the way open. As I said earlier, it has a side charging handle that is reversible. You can flip it to the other side. Being a right-handed shooter, I actually really like this being on the left. It does make it real easy if you have any malfunctions to manipulate the bolt when it's right here. With a standard AR-15, you have to get back here all behind the gun, obviously, with the charging handle location. So this was kind of nice. Um, I will say when I was shooting with my pressure pad being the farthest point forward, I did feel this kind of on my thumb a little bit. And I know other people have talked about this. It would have been nice if this was a little bit further back. This was not a big issue when shooting, but I did feel it kind of bumping my thumb. They did not machine any of these M-Lock slots. They're all water jet or plasma cut. So they're a little bit rough for this being a $1,300 rifle. I would have liked to see proper machining on those. Just seems kind of like a lazy step. And there are a lot of unrefined features on here where the machining is not exactly perfect or there's dings, scratches. For $1,300, you can really build a nice AR-15 that has nice components with nice machining. So for this to have some cut corners, it's kind of frustrating. However, if you're gonna look at this from a duty gun standpoint, none of that even matters. Nobody's gonna be nitpicking the fact that there is water jet slots instead of CNC machine slots. But for the people that care where their money goes, how much they spend, that is something I figured I would note as there are some blemishes on this and not everything is CNC machined. Another thing you will notice with this Jackal is it is a little bit front heavy. Obviously with this piston system being kind of heavy, this is a heavier profile barrel. One thing I did notice when I was on the range is I was having trouble getting the mag to come out freely. I cannot get this to happen in the office and I don't know if it's because it's warmer in here or what, but the mags want to drop free out on the range. I had a couple different mags that were sticking. With this being a serial coated gun, this is kind of common. Even with standard AR-15s, Cerakote adds more material in here. It's just gonna make it inherently tighter. So if you are gonna rely on this gun, I would test a bunch of magazines out on the range, find the ones that work the best. The Gen 2 P mags without the window seem to perform pretty well. These Magpul mags did wanna stick. 
So keep that in mind if you are looking at buying this rifle. There may be a little bit of a break in for getting your mags to drop free. However, you could see in, when I did a reload, I just ripped it out. Wasn't that big of a deal, but definitely something you should keep in mind. This also does have a pretty heavy duty JMAC flash hider on there that I believe will accept chemo suppressors. PSA did opt to offer a couple sling swivel mount locations there though which is kind of nice. There's not too much on this rifle. If you pull all the stuff off, it is pretty slim, but you are gonna notice the weight. It is gonna come in heavier than a standard AR-15. With this being the 13.7, it still doesn't feel too bad. That kind of leads me to my next point, which is recoil. The recoil on this is going to be a little bit more than your standard AR-15. It's also gonna feel a little bit weird since it's the long stroke piston system. It's kind of like a delay. When you shoot, you feel it, but there's kind of like a ch-junk feel to it when you shoot. So shooting it for the first time might feel a little weird, but you'll get used to it. It does feel a little bit slower of a recoil pattern than your standard Air 15, which feels very concise and snappy. This is like a slow push. Not that it really matters, but it does have a little bit more recoil than your standard Air 15. I don't think this is necessarily the best first rifle. It's gonna be more expensive. You could build out a cheaper Air 15 that's lighter, has less recoil and would be a better first option for a rifle for you. I do think this gun has its place. It's incredibly cool. It's very different. If somebody has a couple AR-15s and they're looking for something different, like I am, this was a definitely a pretty cool buy, both with the nostalgia and the stock. It's a piston system, which is really different than a standard gas impingement rifle. And if you're somebody that was looking for a forward charging handle, this gun offers that. So there's just a couple key things that are different than an AR-15 that kind of makes this still a pretty good buy, even though it's expensive even though the quality isn't exactly perfect, even though it weighs a little bit more and has a little bit more recoil, I still think it has its place. I still think it's really cool. And ultimately, if you already have a couple AR-15s and you're looking at branching out, I think it's a pretty good buy. The controls on this rifle are very similar to an AR-15. You have your standard safety selector here, your standard bolt release. I will say that when you push this in, it's flush with the upper here and you kind of have to get it to bottom out to go all the way home. I don't know if it'll come across on camera, but there's just a lot of throw to that lever before it sends it home. You kind of have to bottom it out. One thing I wish I'd have did is thrown in a bolt stop, bolt release on this side, similar to the MCX or the Spear. I would have liked to seen that on this rifle, especially with the price tag and you cannot throw a bad lever on here. It would have just been nice to have that additional feature. Mag release is in the exact same spot as an AR-15. So if you're used to AR-15s, the controls on this are gonna be very similar. The only thing that's gonna be different is getting used to that forward charging handle. With the trigger on the Jackal, I will say it is a very nice trigger. It is a little heavy, but it is very tactile, both on the brake and the reset. So I have no complaints over that. There are definitely worse and better triggers out there. So with about 500 rounds on this rifle, we have not seen any reliability issues, which is kind of to be expected. You can kind of fine tune these rifles with the adjustable gas block. It's inherently gonna be cleaner than a gas impingement system. And ultimately this is kind of like in a sweet spot. If you're looking at rifles, you kind of have AR-15 and AK, and then somewhere in the middle, you kind of have the SIG MCX or the Spear, which is going to be inherently a lot more expensive than this. The AK is a little bit harder to use with the, the lever and you have to use the side charging. It's not for everybody. In a situation where you would need your rifle, I think this would do the job. It's got a pretty good operating system that's going to be reliable. Time will tell exactly how reliable it will be. I've seen people that have issues with the barrels coming loose. This one did not. So I'm not sure if PSA has fixed that issue. Would I trust my life with this gun? Probably, most guns are pretty good nowadays. PSAs came a long way with their quality. I would be interested to see how this thing does after a couple thousand rounds. Would I choose this over an AR-15 in a must situation? Probably not just because all of my AR-15s are vetted and I know they work really well. But if I had to choose this one, yeah, I would have no problem choosing this. I'm not gonna tell somebody to not get this rifle because it's a newer rifle. One thing that's kind of funny is a lot of people on YouTube will say, because it's a brand new gun, you shouldn't buy it. It's not been tested. I disagree with that. I think if you're gonna buy a new gun, just shoot it, put a couple thousand rounds on it and go out and train with it enough to feel comfortable with your own personal rifle and know that it's gonna work. If you're gonna buy one gun, put it in a gun safe and need to rely on it with two or three mags on it, that's kind of silly, even if it was a gas impingement AR-15. So I think this is a pretty cool gun and if this is what you're into, buy it. You're gonna be more likely to shoot the gun that you're interested in than the gun that you're not interested in. Every gun in the beginning can have its issues. If you're willing to put rounds on this and personally vet it, let's say even if you can only put a thousand rounds through it, I think that's a fair enough amount of time to personally know if a gun is vetted and that it's gonna be reliable. Should I think this be your only gun? Probably not. I think everybody should have at least one AR-15. It's just too universal of a rifle to not have one. With all that being said, and everything that I've seen out of this rifle, I think if you like it, you should buy it. 
go out, shoot it, vet it yourself, and just have fun. A lot of people in this industry push training to the max and never just go have fun with rifles. This is a pretty cool gun, so go have fun with it. If you enjoyed this video, we'd appreciate it. Like it, subscribe. We'll see you next time.